So in this video, I am going to talk to you about uh, what is data manipulation and in the next coming videos, I will be talking more about how you can do the data manipulation in R. So for this series, you would require two packages. One of uh, these is dplyr and the other is hflights package. So dplyr is uh, being used for uh, for some of the functions which are required for data manipulation and for the edge flights I am using it because I need the data which on which I will be doing the data manipulation So first and foremost the thing is that you need to install those packages dplyr and edge flights for installing the package You can use the function install dot packages edge flights and similarly you can install the package dplyr Once you have installed it you can import these two libraries once you have installed i would uh, suggest you to read about this uh, data which is uh, uh, edge flights data and which is inside this edge flights package so you need to write just help edge flights on the right hand side you will see that on in the help uh, in the bottom on the right hand side you will see that it is open and it's saying that uh, this is h flights data and it is telling about the variables and their meanings so year month day of month is the date of departure of the flight day of week is the day of the week and uh, uh, depth time and uh, arrival time is the departure and the arrival times in the local time unique carrier is the unique abbreviation for the carrier flight number is the flight number and tail num is airplane tail number so in case you do not understand any of these variable you can uh, come back and see just uh, by typing help edge flights now the second question is that what is data manipulation so data manipulation is like whenever you have any data you uh, you sometimes require to find uh, something some pattern or some some uh, queries you have about uh, some specific things then you try to do uh, try to add the data or delete the data or modify the data in the, and the purpose for this doing all these things is to get an answer for your question which you have about that data so i will be going uh, ahead and so you will be understanding what i meant by this data manipulation so first and uh, foremost you need to uh, store this edge flights uh, data in some object so i am naming this object as df and in this df package uh, in this df object on the right hand side you see in the environment section it is saying that df now stores the data which is a data frame and uh, uh, it has 2,27,496 observations and it has 21 variables so if you need to see if you want to see what this uh, data has inside it you just need to click on this on the right hand side on this you will see that the uh, data will be open and uh, you can see the variable names at the top the first variable is year the second is month day of month day of week depth time air time unique carrier and so on uh, our time unique carrier flight num tail num so these are the variables i will be talking while i am telling about the functions which are required for doing for some specific purpose while you are trying to get an answer to some question uh, i will be telling each of these variable what does it mean but some of the uh, variable is very obvious like year month day of month day of week and if it is not very clear you can just help and uh, do a help edge flights you can get on the right hand side as it is shown here in the help so 
um, let's come back to this and see the uh, structure if you want to see the structure of this it will say it is a data frame and this is the number of observations and it, it has 21 variables these are these uh, year month day of month and all those things so in the next uh, video i will be talking about um, what i am going to use but uh, in this video i'm just going to tell what are the functions mainly which we will be using one by one so first function is the select function which is uh, uh, for used for selecting some specific columns or variables and filter uh, second is the filter function which is used for filtering some rows based on some condition i will be explaining in detail about how to do all those but uh, right now i'm just telling what are the functions which you will be using uh, for data manipulation thing and then arrange is for arranging some variable in ascending or descending order and mutate is when you want to create new column or a new variable in existing data and the summarize is uh, to reduce the data by grouping so there is also one group function where you try to group with the help of some uh, uh, group uh, some variables and then summarize it so I will uh, go one by one uh, I will on the first video I will start with the select and then we will you go one by one and try to answer one of the all the questions which we have in this data which is uh, edge flights data so thanks for watching this video hello so in this video uh, we will talk about the function which is select function and we will understand why it is being used so what we are going to do first and foremost the thing is that we have this data frame already tf so just click on this and see what the data is like looks like so data has 21 variables as you can see by scrolling like this so it has 21 variables and say you want to select any columns specific columns only specific columns you don't want to select all the columns instead you just want to select only few columns so you just to pick and then what you would do is first thing is that there is an operator which is called pipeline operator this is known as pipeline pipeline operator and this operator is inside the deep layer package which we have already installed and imported uh, so the thing is what we are going to do now is we are going to use this pipeline operator and what we are saying is if you see like this we are saying take this data frame df and then we are saying that this pipeline operator is trying to pipe the operation select with this df it's saying that take this data frame and then select these three columns that is that is flight num taxi in and taxi out so if you just uh, select this and hit control enter in the console it will try to print all the all the observations that is very big 227496 which we do not want to print because it is very long so it may take some time so instead what we we should do is we will store this complete query into this object modified df so what we have done is modified df is df then pipeline operator select the column name so let's select this and control enter on the right hand side you see that the num modified df has the same number of observations same number of rows but the number of columns has changed because we have only selected three columns earlier we had 21 columns but right now we have three columns only whereas the number of rows remains the same if you click on this you see that df has all the 21 columns whereas the modified df has only three columns so this is the purpose of using the select function now say you 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 want all uh, you want all the what you would do is what now you are going to do is you want all the variables except few 
then what you would do is you will use the same command uh, same function select inside that you will write minus and then write the vector of all the column names without without the quotes so you will write minus c flight num which is the one column name taxi in and taxi out so these column names will not be present now so select this and hit control enter on the right hand side you see it modified df has 18 variables and df has 21 variables three variables are missing and these three variables are flight num taxi in and taxi out which we have not selected and we have chosen this by writing a minus before this if you click on the modified df you see that all columns will be present but these flight num is not present taxi in and taxi out is also not present here so this is about selecting and dropping any variable using the select function now say what happens if you want to select only few rows you 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 want to just select few rows instead of i'm not i'm not selecting about the columns i'm talking about the selection of few rows and that to just randomly selection so say you have 227496 observations and you just need the 10% of those observations which will be something around 2274 uh, which will be something about 10% will be something about 22749 observations something like that so what you will do is you will use the function sample underscore frac you will write the same code you will take df and you will say to the pipeline operator take df and then sample some of the rows and size is telling how much size you are going to take means you are saying point 0.1 so maximum value of size is one and the minimum value is zero so point one means ten percent point two means twenty percent point three means thirty percent so right now you are saying ten percent of the total number of rows in the data frame so df whatever the number of rows df has take the ten percent of that and then you you are storing this data frame into modified df so if you see right now on the right hand side you see that modified df has approximately approximate 22,750 observations which is approximately 10% of the number of rows of df which you can see and also you can see the number of columns did not change but the number of rows has changed so in the case of when you are trying to uh, randomly select few rows you want to and this the purpose of doing this is to just uh, create uh, find the, some sample out of uh, big data you have uh, and you do not want to store all the data you just want to do some kind of analysis in some subset of the data you try to sample randomly and the purpose you can do it uh, using the function sample underscore frag so you can take a bigger size also 20 percent or 3 30 percent by just choosing changing this value in the next uh, video i will be explaining about uh, the other function which is the mutate function and uh, i hope you have understood this uh, so thanks for watching hello so in this video i will be talking about the mutate function so mutate function is also very easy what you need to do is just write df in the pipeline operator and then use the function mutate so mutate function is to create a new variable or new column in the data so it will add one column to the existing number of columns in the data frame so right now the df has 21 columns so if you create any one column it will make the number of columns to 22 and what you're doing it will not change the number of columns in df because you are storing uh, this complete query into modified df so whatever this modified df it will be having 22 columns because df you're taking df and you're adding one more column let's create one column named by average speed so average speed is equal to distance by air time and you're just using this function you are taking the distance variable which is present in df and air time variable and you are dividing it and this is just basically you are using the function to create a new variable which is the average speed if you select this and hit control enter if you will be seeing that uh, in the modified df has 22 variables because uh, we had 21 variables in df but you have already created one new column so it has made it 22 so in the modified df if you see on the right hand side if you go there will be one column which is known as average speed 
so this is has been added in the df we do not have this column if you see on the right hand side it is not but in the modified df which we have created from df uh, it has created one column which is named by average speed you can also create two or more than two um, more than one uh, columns in, at a single go so you just use single function mutate and you can just uh, create one function average speed then comma and then again you do the same thing for creating new column so after creating average speed say you are creating another column which is named by actual ground time that can be calculated by actual elapsed time minus year time so that will give you the actual ground time so you are creating uh, a new variable by just uh, subtracting these two variables actual elapsed time and your time so again if you select this and hit control enter what you see is in the modified df has now 23 columns so df has only 21 and it has 23 that means two columns have been added up so in the modified df if you go on the right hand side you see two variables had been added average speed and actual ground time and these has been created by already existing columns which are mentioned here which you have mentioned average speed is calculated by distance by air time and actual ground time is calculated by actual elapsed time and air time so this is how you can use the mutate function to create new columns in the existing data so thanks for watching this video hello so in this video i'm going to tell you about uh, the function which is group and that is very important function where you try to take some columns uh, say here right now i'm taking the column month and flight number and on the basis of those month and flight number what we are trying to do we are trying to find the average delay so say we just use the month right now leave it this aside and what you are saying is we are taking the df data frame and grouping it by month so we have say 1 to 12 months and then we are saying summarize so we are earlier what we were doing is we were uh, taking the average of departure delay or arrival delay and uh, that was the aggregated on basis of all the rows but right, right now we will have the average uh, for the departure delay for each of the each of the months separately so for the january month what is that departure delay for the february month what is the departure delay so in this case we have the information for the departure delay average departure delay for each of the months in that case we do need to use group by before the summarize function so now what we will do if we are grouping by month and then we are creating new column which is average delay and that is summarizing uh, and that, that is the name of uh, the variable which we are going to create after summarize so and we are taking the mean of departure delay variable and we are using this keyword after comma na dot rm is equal to true that means we want to remove the na values in the departure delay the last video i've already explained that there are some values which are missing and those are represented by na so we need to uh, remove those na values so that we can find the average or the min or the maximum value of that variable so let's use this query and uh, select and control enter and store this in df modified data frame if you click on this you see that for each of the months say first month the average departure delay is 7.93 the second month the average departure delay is 9.244 so had it been like this that you didn't use the group by function and if you just use the summarize function what will happen you just see go to df modified you see that that the average delay is saying 9.44 but we don't have any information that on which month what is the departure delay average and but so if you need to get the information for the departure delay on on each of the month then you need to use the group by function that is the reason we use the group by function before the summarize say you need the information of departure delay before or for the week information say day of week so, so what we will do hit 
select and control enter and go to df modified now you see you have day of week column for each of the day of week you have the average departure delay for for the monday you have this tuesday you have this wednesday you have this saturday and sunday is this so you can get an information on which day of week the departure delay on an average is high or low this is how you can get the information out now say you uh, you want to get an information of flight number as well so which flight has the high departure time high average departure delay so we are grouping by flight number and we are calculating the average departure delay for each of the flight number so let's select this and hit control enter so we have all these flight numbers ranging starting from 1 till 7 to 9 0 these are the flight numbers and for each of these flight number we have the average delay if you want to see which of the flight number has the minimum average delay then you just click here and this is the minimum value minus 10 you want to see so 1817 is the flight number which has the minimum average delay that is minus 10 minus 10 means 10 minutes uh, before the arrival time the plane has landed so if you click on this again you get the maximum average departure delay this is actually departure delay so it is not about the arrival delay but it is about the departure delay so uh, 4493 flight number has the maximum departure delay that means it has uh, uh, it is delayed by this many minutes after the departure time so this is the how you are going to calculate now say you want the information of departure delay average and uh, for each month and for each flight separately so what you would do is you will use month before this flight number so you're now grouping not by just single variable but you're grouping by two columns now you're uh, grouping by month as well as flight number so you will select this and hit control enter and you see that now you have separate information for departure delay for each month and for each flight so for first month you have the information for all the flights then you have second month and you have the all the flights and the departure delay information this is how you can get an information of any variable for in, uh, any variable summary statistics for some uh, columns like month flight number and unto, like those so this is how you can use the group by function uh, for uh, doing the summary statistics on the basis of grouping of some variables so in the next videos i will be explaining you that how you can use all these together functions so that you can understand um, that what is the uh, basic purpose of uh, doing all these things and uh, basically you are trying to find that they uh, find uh, find the answers to the questions you have maybe you have the questions like uh, which has the maximum departure delay uh, on which month is the maximum departure delay and uh, on which day is the maximum departure delay so for those questions you need to group by and then summarize and then you have to sort that to find the which month has and which day has the maximum departure delay or which flight number has the maximum departure delay so thanks for watching this video hello so in this video i will explain you about what is the summarize function so summarize function is to aggregate the data and uh, aggregate the data i mean to say you either you want to try to uh, find the some uh, value minimum value or the maximum value or the mean value or you can say that it's like finding the statistics basic statistics of uh, of any variable say you have arrival delay variable so there if you see the data frame df which is the original data frame you see the arrival delay and if you click here on the arrival delay you see the minimum value is minus 70 which means uh, that it is not delayed rather it reaches the destination uh, 70 minutes prior to its uh, time uh, so and the maximum arrival delay is if you see so if you you are seeing that there are some na values which means it has some missing data so first of foremost we try, we have to uh, find the missing data 
we, we need to remove that missing data so that we can find the summary of this data because this uh, NA values will hinder in our calculations. So if you want to see this is the minimum and we want to see the maximum value, the maximum value you can see that maximum is 978. Right, and there are some also missing values which we have already seen at the end. So, what we will do is right now let's do first filtering. So, say if you just want to filter this data, we have underscore modified. So what I am saying is, you want to filter the original data frame which is df, and you are filtering and you are saying that is dot na is dot na in the variable arrival delay so is there any na values in arrival delay and then you are using the not sign so it's saying that do not take those rows where the arrival delay has any values it's saying like that so not that means do not use where we have any values in arrival delay that is how you will read it. So DF, you right now, if you see in the original DF data frame, there is any values. If you do not want that, then what we will do is we will write DF and then filter function not is dot NA arrival delay. Now, if you see the modified DF, DF, uh, we have created DF modified. So if you see DF modified right now, and if you see arrival delay you will and if you just click here you will see the minimum value is minus 70 and the maximum value is 978 but you do not see any any values this is because we have filtered those now after filtering what you are going to do you are going to find the summary of this arrival delay column so what how you can do is you can write just df underscore modified what you're doing you're writing df you're filtering the arrival delay column where you do not have uh, the any values and then you're saying summarize which column arrival delay column and take the min mean and max so this is first min delay is first column this is second column and this is third column so this will actually tell the min max and mean mean is for average of arrival delay column so if you select this and hit control enter and if you go to df under, underscore modified you get a data frame which is saying that min delay is minus 70 average delay is 7.09 and max delay is 978 this is after removing the any values in the data frame so this is uh, this is how you can find the summary statistics for any uh, column. So right now I am using uh, the column arrival delay, and we we first filtered out the any values, and then we found the summary statistics. You could have done this for any variable, departure delay or anything. So and also it's possible that you can do the summary statistics of different variables at the same time. You just need to change here depth time uh, departure delay i think uh, uh, the name of departure delay is depth delay yes so you can if you do the depth delay then it will take the average for the depth delay here instead of arr delay arrival delay so this is how you can find the summary statistics for any variable or any variables in the next video i will explain you about how you can use the group function to summarize any specific variable and then find the summary statistics for other variable. In the next video, I will explain you what I meant to say by this. And so, hello. So, in this video, I will be talking about the next function, which is the filter function. And this is function is used mainly when you try to filter some rows. We are not talking about filtering or selecting any columns. Mind it. So, for selecting the columns, you use the function select, or dropping the columns, you use the function select. Whereas when you try to filter the rows based on some condition, the condition you put on the the condition you put on the uh, column, 
and you try to on the basis of that condition uh, you say that select only those rows uh, on which the column a has value say one so it will only select those rows which uh, column where the column a has the value one it will drop all the values all other rows so what you're doing is right now was the first this take the df pipeline operator use the filter function and it's saying that only take the those rows where the distance variable is greater than thousand what does that mean if you see the df here in the df data frame you can see there is distance variable the distance variable if you sort if you want to sort it you just click here it will be sorted ascending and descending depending on what you want so right now it is sorted this data frame is completely sorted on the basis of distance variable and the minimum value is 79 and you see that uh, you go scroll down you will see the maximum value is 3904 what you want is right now you just want to select uh, those rows where the distance is greater than thousand so right now it is starting from 79 so it will filter all the rows which are uh, lesser than where the distance is lesser than thousand so these rows will not be coming in the modified data so let's try to store this select this and hit control enter now if you click on this you see the distance if you if you sort it so if you sort it you will see that the minimum value is now 1009 so since 1001 1002 1003 are not present in the data that's why it is not present here but the minimum value is 1009 none of these values are lesser than 1000 all the values are more than 1000 or all the values are more than 1000 but none of the values will be lesser than 1000 it can be if you want to put the equal condition you can put greater and equal if you want still there is no thousand value that's why thousand is not present say if you just want to filter those rows which has only distance equal to thousand and nine what you will do is just copy this and instead of greater what we will write we will write distance equal use double equal sign huh? and select this and hit control and now you see no no uh, only single you have to use only single here what is it there what's the problem no no thousand is not present you have to take thousand and nine now if you see yeah yeah so now it's back and you see that this modified data frame has distance and only thousand and nine is present in all the rows so th this is how you can you can do greater lesser equal for any numeric variable of a character variable you can just uh, do basis on uh, this equal sign double equal sign say you want a destination right now if you see if you see the df if you see the df you see destination as bpt lch and other also say we we don't want L lch we only want the bpt what we would do what we will do is we will write just modified df the same way select this and we will write the column name dest and what we want to do is we want to dest to be phx say phx we will take this phx and write within the inverted commas so now if you go to modify df we only have phx dest will have only phx no other values will be present in the dest because you have mentioned that dest should be only this now say you want now let's say you want only the day of month day of month so many day of month is there or day of week let's talk of the day of week the minimum day of week is one just hit here click here minimum is one 
and maximum will be seven so so it is coded and uh, you can say one is like monday and then tuesday the th wednesday thursday it is like that so say we want the day of week and we want only uh, like saturday and sunday say six and seven is saturday and sunday so how we would do is we will use day of week variable and we will say that day of week should either be present uh, should either be equal to six or seven the other way of writing this is you can just write percent in percent that means day of week should have only these two values so vector six and seven so this is how you can just select and control enter now you see in this modified data frame you will see day of week is either six minimum is six and maximum will be seven so this is how you can uh, filter on based on many conditions you can use lesser greater equal for numeric variable or character variable and also if you just want uh, the var variable have only a uh, few values then you can use percent in person where you can mention the values which you want to have so you have you want to have one two three then you can write here one two three so a day of week will only be equal to one two three and if you just want the day of week to be only three then just write day of week equal equal three so it will give day of week to be only three this is how you can use the filter condition for doing lots of filtering in the data and in the next video i will be explaining more about the next uh, few functions and then we will be doing the exercises so that you will understand why we are using all these functions and how we can uh, approach to the final pattern which we are trying to come up with the with, the, with any data so thanks for watching this video hello so in this video we are going to talk about the three functions which is apply s apply and l apply these functions are meant for applying for uh, applying a certain function like minimum function maximum function or the mean function uh, like uh, uh, these functions are applied for the data frame for if you have many columns and you want to apply a single function to all those columns and get the summary for that so if you do not understand what i meant to say let's go ahead and let's do and uh, for that you need uh, this uh, data set which is birth wt and uh, we will be installing this package install that packages mass once you select this and hit control enter this will be installed um, after this is installed you just import this library by writing library mass and then let's uh, store this data set birth wt in the object data frame so if you want to read about this data set you just write help birth wp on the right hand side in the help section you will see the information about this data set what this data set is all about and what each of these column names mean so on the right hand side in the environment section if you click on uh, this uh, data frame you will see that uh, the data frame looks like something like this where the first column is low and uh, then age age means the age of the age of the you can say the these are the age of the ladies and then lwt and then race and the smoke and ptl these are the column names and we have 189 observations so there are 10 variables and 189 observations some of which are uh, here are quite categorical and some of them are numerical so right now i am taking a simple min max functions I am trying to for use that function so that this uh, tutorial is easy to understand for uh, what does apply function do. Let's subset this data set and just instead of taking all the 10 variables, let's take only few three variables so which are numerical. So I will be taking three variables uh, which is age, LWT and BWT. The way you subset this data frame is just writing within the square brackets after the comma. Just write the vector of the names of column. Uh, which you want to subset just write like this and select this so that this now you see the number of observations is 189 and the number of variables are only three if you click on this now you see that only age and wt and bwt is present and rest of the variable has gone because we have subset this data and we have only now three columns so let's say we want to do that for all these three columns you want a mean 
and uh, you you want the mean and uh, you want the apply function to use so how you would do either uh, you can take the column wise means since here uh, it doesn't make any sense to take the row wise means also but uh, this is possible by the apply function apply function you can either take the row wise means or the column wise means but here i don't think that there is uh, there is any meaning of taking uh, the row wise means so let's take only the column wise mean so how we would do like that so let's take let's write a1 apply and then data frame and one is for row and two is for column so what you do is if you after the comma you hit tab you see it so uh, it says margin so one indicates rows and two indicates columns so since we want column wise mean we will write two here and then we will say what is the mean value let's start with the min value just select this and hit control enter if you click or uh, if you see select this and see what a1 has a1 is uh, age lwt and bwt and the age minimum value is 14 and lwt minimum value is 80 and bwt minimum value is 709 what you can do is go to back to the data frame and if you see and if you click on the age you see that this data frame gets sorted by age so you see the minimum value of age is 14 here if you click on the lwt the data set gets sorted by lwt and you see the minimum value is 80 here and again if you do, do for bwt you see the minimum value is 709 same likewise if you want to find the max value what we can do instead of min function you will write max and now again if you see so age max value is 45 if you click on this minimum is 14 and if you click again you will see the max value is 45 it gets sorted by in descending order so age is 45 max value if you click on lwt minimum is 80 if you click again you see the maximum value of lwt is 250 again you click on bwt the minimum value is 709 and click again the minimum uh, the maximum value is 4990 so like this is the way of using the apply function when you try to find some summary like minimum value maximum value median standard deviation or something like that for many columns you need to check that whether uh, taking the row wise or the column wise makes sense or not if you want to take the mean row wise then you can take uh, the mean like row wise by just indicating instead of two you just need to write one now if you see the structure of a1 you see the structure of a1 says that this is a named integer vector it is a vector and uh, it has uh, the values three values and it has names in it uh, because age lwt and bwt if you want to convert it into just a numeric vector what you can do is just write a1 and then write as dot numeric a1 what this function will do is that the names will be removed now so we, you don't have any names so after the apply function if you want to convert into a numeric vector you can just uh, uh, use the function as that numeric and just convert into a vector with without the names so this is how you can um, now if you want to access the first element of this you can just write a1 and then inside the double square uh, this uh, single square brackets you write one this is the index of this vector you get the 45 now uh, as i already told if you want to take the mean uh, row wise or column wise you can just choose the values uh, you can just write uh, one for row and the two for column now what is apply what is l apply in the l apply case what you do is you first uh, first argument is the same as apply if you match with the apply you see that this is the syntax for apply so in apply we what we did is 
we first wrote data frame which is same as uh, apply also but the second argument is row wise or column wise but if here is in l apply it is always the column wise when you are using the data frame so you you cannot write one or two you just have to uh, you have to keep in mind that l apply you are doing all the things uh, column wise so third uh, third uh, uh, argument is min max or median or mean whatever the uh, function summary function you want to use let's take the first summary function as min and just to see what what it gives l1 so you see the minimum value of age is 14 max minimum of lwt is 80 709 for bwt so what's the difference between a1 and w1 you if you see you have seen that a1 which was the apply a function result that was actually a vector but right now if you see the structure of l1 this is not a vector instead this is a list so l apply returns a list after calculating the summary of each of the variable columns i have already explained about the subsetting how you can subset so i am not going on detail of that let's go to the s apply function in s apply also the syntax is very similar it is almost same but the only difference between l apply and the s apply is uh, that in s apply you don't get the list in return rather you get a vector so if you use this s1 function and you are writing s apply then the first argument is data frame and then the second argument is min max or mean or median anything so you as i already told in apply you have two um, um, things either you can do row wise or column wise for row wise in the middle you have to write one for the column wise you have to write two but in l apply and s apply you have only two arguments which you can write first is the data frame and the second is the function min like min max and median so if you write the structure of s1 if you see it is again a vector it is the same as uh, apply but apply when you apply it column wise then it is same as s apply because it returns the same function but l apply and s apply is always doing all the things column wise it never does the things as a thing row wise so if you see what s1 returns so s1 is like this and if you see the a1 which we already explained here this is a1 which is ap apply function you see the structure of a1 you can see that s1 structure of s1 is this and the structure of a1 is this which is similar s1 is s1 we have seen here right now s1 is like this if you see click on there s1 age is 14 lwt 80 bwt 709 which is the result of using the s apply and if you see a1 it is also the same so return of s apply and apply with column wise is the same because both of them returns the vector whereas the l apply l apply returns uh, the list so you need to see what you want and what uh, which one of the function is useful for your analysis so these are the three functions which you might require uh, during your uh, analysis. So thanks for watching this video.